Well, thank you for coming today. We're going to read about the night before Christmas. And uh, believe it or not, this is a very special book for me. This is a book I've been reading the night before Christmas for, this is my 37th Christmas reading this book. That means my daughter turned 37 this year. And uh, so this would have been, this is her 37th Christmas coming up, my oldest daughter. And we've just had a great time with this book over the years. So it's The Night Before Christmas by Clement C. Moore. And as you can see, it's a special pop-up version. So everybody see, you know, we got a little house here, trees, etc. All right, here we go. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. While visions of sugar plums danced in their heads and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. Okay, you ready? When out from the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I sprang from the bed. <laughs> I love that. To see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and drew down the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called out their name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cubit, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As the dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke had encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad little face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed. <laughs> that is too weird. <laughs> Shook when he laughed, like a bowl full of jelly. Chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. So, he spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney, hero. <laughs> there he is, okay? He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And from all of us here at Hastings College, we wish you a Merry Christmas.